Good morning, folks. I'll start down under. While you might think H5N1 would be the scary story, I'm more concerned about the Nemoy River. Got blue-green algae? This can kill pets in an hour, small children in a day. Be careful if you're headed out. There's been an oil leak at an ExxonMobil location in Nigeria. The Virgil C. Summer nuke plant is having large structural cracks frantically fixed before it, quote, starts to become dangerous. We discovered a new mile-long oil sheen at the Deepwater Horizon area, and coming back to the southwest Pacific, these pilot whales will not be able to be saved. I'll briefly mention this buoy now that it has deviated from swells beyond the normal ebb and flow. Not a major deviation, but certainly peculiar behavior. The 13th was a nice break in the quake watch, but so much for that. A six-pointer rang off the coast of Chile that hit 6.6 .6 on one reader. Then this morning, a six-pointer struck southern Mexico from the Pacific Ridge, felt all the way to the Gulf. Switching gears to Tropical Depression 25, the intensity of these South Asia storms is truly incredible. Even a small tropical depression can have bands and shear affecting areas hundreds of miles away. You might remember from yesterday, the two blue lows on the left were joined as one. You're going to see them break here and the southern low becomes isolated and cyclonic. The helical flow will drench Portugal, but Central Europe could be drier for a few days. Western and Northern Australia are still stuck in that hot tropical low, while these Antarctic low protrusions in the south will sweep colder air across the southern coastline over to New Zealand. Showing full North America pressure because the only significant lows are in Canada right now. The central low is what's bringing moderately warmer air to the central states. You see that other low to the left of that. Now each wants to spin counterclockwise, so that means in that thin central region, you got warmer ocean air and a head-on collision with the cold the central low is bringing down. I could run down each of these solar wind indices, but suffice to say the CME impact and magnetic storm are over, stabilization and equilibrium are returning. Slight downtick in flares over the last 24 hours, but not a downtick in geoeffective space weather. I don't know if it was the morning's M flare or the following energetic surface charges, but one of them pushed out a sizable CME, and yep, it's on its way here. More moderate geomagnetic storms are possible. The last 48 hours have seen a true degradation state of the active regions. We have seen decay in every large umbral group and surrounding penumbra. A few new center spots and the ones in the top left are the only diminishing threat. Very dark, very southern coronal hole is earth-facing today with thin filament eruption threats in tow. Six significant quakes so far this watch, only one in the time between the last watch. Still have a while to go, Mercury nearly transits the sun in two days. Eyes open, no fear, it's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.